Good morning, readers, and welcome back to our Read Aloud, where we are doing a nonfiction text study and thinking about what do we know about nonfiction text and how can we compare and contrast nonfiction text to figure out what's the same and what's different. Look at this book. What do you notice about the front cover of this book? That's right, trains. Wait a minute. We just learned about trains in our last book. Readers, sometimes authors will write a nonfiction book about a topic just like these two. Today, we're going to read this text by Gail Gibbons and think about how it is the same and different from this text. We're going to compare the two texts, compare and contrast them. When we read nonfiction texts, a lot of times we'll read texts that are about the same topic or that have the same main idea. Good readers think about how the books they read are the same and different from each other. Here's how we do that. We read two books on the same topic. We notice what is the same and what is different about the two books. Today, we're gonna to read a nonfiction book called Trains by Gail Gibbons. Already by looking at the front cover, I can see one thing that is the same and one thing that is different about these two books. The first book we read had a photograph of a train. This book by Gail Gibbons has a picture or an illustration of a train. One way that they are the same is that both of the books are about trains and the title of both books is Trains. Let's see what we can learn in our nonfiction book today. Many kinds of trains move along the tracks. Hmm, before I even start reading, I noticed that when I started my book, I didn't have a table of contents. When we started our book last time, as soon as we opened it, we saw a table of contents. That's something different about this book. It does not have a table of contents. Clickety-clack, they are pulled by their powerful locomotives. The first locomotives were built about 150 years ago. The trains were pulled by steam engines. They use wood or coal for fuel. I'm noticing a text feature. What text feature do you see? That's right, word labels. I see word labels helping us to understand different parts of the train. We learned a new fact on these pages. We read that the first locomotives were built 150 years ago. That's a long time ago. We didn't learn that in our other book. We also learned that trains are pulled by something called steam engines. That's a fact too. We didn't learn that in our other book. This book so far is talking about some older chains, trains, but it does have word labels. Today, some steam engines are still in use. There are also trains that have diesel engines and others that are run by electricity. They all run on railroad tracks. Wow, I also see some more labels that are telling us different parts of the train. Look at the word labels. Passenger trains carry people throughout subway tunnels around cities and to nearby towns. Some passenger trains stop at railroad stations and carry people to faraway towns and cities. Passengers can eat and sleep on the train. Ooh, what do you see there? Some more text features. That's right, word labels that are telling us the different parts of the train. There are freight trains too. They carry heavy loads. Sometimes more than one engine is needed to pull a very long 
train. Wow, this book is also telling us about the different kinds of trains. That is one way this book is similar or the same as the book we read last time. It's telling us about the different kinds of trains. That's a fact that is the same. The cars are connected by couplers. Couplers hold cars together. When one car is bumped into another, pulling the uncoupler lever lets them come apart. Freight trains have lots of different cars. Flat cars haul many kinds of cargo. Refrigerator cars carry food that needs to be kept fresh. The hopper cars are hauling gravel and coal. The train stops, grain is poured into the covered hopper cars. Hmm. This part of the story is telling me more about how trains work. It told us about how the cars are connected by a coupler. Now the story is telling us about how hopper cars haul gravel and coal. Wow, there are refrigerator cars, hopper cars, piggyback cars, boxer cars, gondola cars. Let's read to find out more. The train moves on. Piggyback cars carry truck trailers, box cars, box cars and tank cars go by. The box cars are carrying furniture. The tank cars are carrying oil. These gondola cars are hauling scrap metal. The train stops. Grain is dumped from the covered hoppers. Hmm, let's pause there for today, team. Let's pause and think about the main idea of the book. First, I need to think about the facts I've learned about trains. I learned some facts about the history of trains, the types of trains, and the different types of train cars and how they fit together. The author included lots of labels to help me understand that. I think the author wanted us to know how trains came to be today. And also about different kinds of trains and how they work. This helps me understand the main idea. This text is mostly about the history of trains and the different types of trains and how they work. Now we have to think about ways that these two books are the same and different. We already noticed that they are different because this book has drawings and the other book has photographs. This book does not have a table of contents or a glossary. They do both have captions and labels to describe the pictures, and they do both talk about the different types of trains. One thing that was different though was this book by Gibbons also told us about the history of trains. The other book did not tell us about the history of trains. So there are a lot of ways that these books were the same and different. As good readers today, we figured out the main idea of the story by looking at the facts. We thought about the facts, we noticed the text features, and we figured out the main idea. We read two books on the same topic. We noticed what was the same and different about the two books. Thanks for reading.